What's up, guys? So not sure you guys heard, but there's been a pretty big uh, Google search algorithm leak. Someone shared with Rand Fishkin. He's uh, one of the co-founders of Moz, one of the OGs in the space. So someone shared with, with him what looks like to be a massive document revealing Google's internal search engine operation. So here's the document right here. It's absolutely massive. I'm going to link to a bunch of blog posts that analyze this extremely well, but if you're interested in taking a look at this yourself, um, again, you'll have the link to that, but I recommend downloading this EPUB version, turning it into a PDF and then feeding either ChatGPT or Gemini. They're gonna go really in depth for you and help you analyze all of that. I've been using it and it's super helpful. But anyway, let's talk about some of the things that stood out to me. Um, and the main thing is there's so many things that SEOs have been talking about for some time, things that we believe exists based on experiments and based on different tests that we run. Uh, and Google has always been saying that they don't exist, but luckily uh, these documents now confirm a lot of those things, plus a bunch of other things. So let's talk about some things that stood out to me. So the first is the sandbox. So there's a section in the document that proves that Google treats new websites differently until they earn a specific amount of credibility. Here's John Mueller saying that there is no sandbox Good for him, good for us. Uh, so yeah, so there is a sandbox. Not exactly sure how long it is. People say it's three months, six months, but if you do have a new website, very important to know that results will not come right away, right? So be patient and just the fact that there is a sandbox, I think will help a lot of new website owners. Next, domain authority. Here's Gary Isles saying that they don't have overall domain authority, but within the internal documents, there is a metric called site authority, which seems to be exactly that. And so it does mean that, in fact, uh, Google does measure the overall authority of the site, and that does seem to be impacting the rankings, which we also already knew. CTR matters. Again, another thing that we've known for a while, they've always denied uh, using click data to influence search rankings, but the leaked documents show that there's systems like NavBoost and Glue they use click data to adjust ranking. So, so they basically look at 13 months of click data to boost or lower rankings based on user behavior. Metrics like good clicks, bad clicks, and last longest clicks are considered. So, so this proves that user interaction within the search results are plays a crucial, crucial role uh, inside of the Google search algorithm, which we also already knew. Now, next thing is Chrome data inside of the rankings. So Google has denied using Google Chrome um, for their ranking algorithms, but within the leaked documents, uh, they reveal that Google does use Chrome's clickstream data in the search rankings. And that includes stuff like user interactions, site visits, views, engagement duration. All of this influences the site quality score and also the generation of site links within the search results. So again, it is showing that Chrome data is an important factor in how search results are determined. Next, links are very important. Again, we've known this for quite a while, um, but the documents do go into detail about how Google, about how Google is evaluating these links, freshness and the specific tier of the linking page. And then they also seem to detect link spam velocity. So, so if you are, for example, creating some type of negative SEO attack on a website, Google can see the amount of link spam that you're sending to a specific website and they can detect and probably uh, nullify that negative SEO attack, which is kind of interesting, but it also makes a lot of sense. So some things that I was not expecting, special priority and whitelisting specific domains. So it does seem that Google prioritizes specific domains for certain searches. For example, during COVID-19, they prioritize COVID-related information from credible sources. So same goes for election related queries, ensuring that trustworthy sites appear at the top. So this shows that Google can manually adjust rankings to ensure the reliability of information during critical events. But it is also kind of scary how easy they can just manipulate specific searches. Next, authors and entities. So Google explicitly tracks and measures authorships and entities. So again, wasn't really, not really sure how they can do that at scale, but this means that building a reputation as an author and ensuring that you have proper markup will also positively impact your ranking. So Google identifies authors and treats them as entities in the system. So having a recognized author can boost the credibility and ranking of your content. 
Next, and this one is also quite scary, the impact on small websites. It does seem that Google might be in some way treating small websites differently. So the documents do suggest that small personal sites uh, can struggle to rank despite following the SEO best practices that other massive sites also follow. So very important to focus on building your site's authority and credibility, which again, we also already knew. So then we have demotions. This one's kind of interesting. So specific demotions that can impact your site's ranking. For example, anchor mismatch. If the link doesn't match the target site it's linking to, that link is demoted. Exact match domain. We've known this for a while. They don't receive as much value as they historically did. Back in the early days, you could just get an exact match domain, and just rank whatever you'd like. Um, product review. So this one's probably based on the recent update uh, in terms of quality and trustworthiness of product reviews. And then SERP demotion, this is interesting. So again, potential user dissatisfaction with the page as likely measured by clicks. So again, they're tracking clicks. They know whether people are liking that specific result, clicking on it, how long are they clicking on it for? If they're not liking that result, then they're probably gonna demote it within the SERPs. Now there's so much more guys, I've barely covered uh, the main things. These are just the things that kind of stood out to me. I'm gonna add links to all the resources in the description, highly recommend downloading it and turning it into a PDF and then adding it to ChatGPT or Gemini. It's gonna really help you guys with the analysis. Let me know if you guys have any comments, any questions, and I'll see you guys in the next one.